So we begin our Advent season. As our family has lit the Advent candle and we are here, we start on a 24-day vigil before we ex you know, experience that opening of the Christ consciousness within us. Advent is really the time of preparation. It's preparing ourselves for Christmas, for that birth of the Christ consciousness within us. And we already know that we already have that Christ consciousness within us. So it is sometimes not necessarily the birth, but the expansion, the growth, the magnification of that, bringing our awareness to it, that truly the Christ consciousness resides within each of us. The word Advent comes from a Latin word Adventus, and it means to come. So something is coming, and the coming is, of course, the birth of that Christ the Christ consciousness within each of us. So in Advent, knowing that something is coming, we begin to prepare for that. We prepare in our own way. And what we are preparing is the manger. The manger metaphysically represents that inner space within where we connect with the divine power and presence of spirit. It's that indwelling place where we are one with all that is, we are one with ourselves, where we feel the connection of love and peace, where we find ourselves linked to the universal presence of all that is. And in there is where our light shines, the essence of who we are. And however strong that light might be shining with the advent, time of advent, we work with this light. We work with our own inter internal light, bringing forth a greater sense of light, a greater sense of universal consciousness, a greater sense of that Christ consciousness within us. So it's a time for preparing, for reflecting, for going within, for truly preparing for the great expansion of the Christ consciousness within us. And keep something in mind, as prepared as we are will be the degree to which we will experience that Christ consciousness moving through us. Prepare not at all, and there may not seem to be much of a change within you. But go through these preparation processes that we'll be talking about throughout this four, week, four weeks of Advent. And we begin to open our hearts more. We begin to open up and prepare the manger. The very manger does take some preparation in order to be ready to receive that Christ consciousness within us. So each week we're going to be invited to look at ourselves, to ask questions. Are you willing to devote the time? Are you willing to create time in your busy schedule? To prepare the manger. It's very easy for all of us to get caught up in the shopping and you know in the food preparation and visiting with friends and there's always busy, 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 busy. Well you are invited during this season to find some time for quiet, for reflection, again for asking questions. Faith as we know it in youth broad is, is that which we believe our thoughts and our beliefs and all that we know to be true. So when we have faith in something, we believe in it, right? It's that which we expect, what we hope for, perhaps what we anticipate will happen. Hebrews 11, verse 1, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. With God, all things are possible. Now, here's the question. What do you have faith in? What do you believe in? What do you believe? Where is your faith? Where is your focus? Where is your attention? What are your thoughts about? Really, where is your faith? Now, I'm not talking about faith in God or faith in universal consciousness or faith in Christ consciousness. I'm talking about where is your faith? What do you believe in? Do you have faith in sickness? And in illness, or do you have faith in wellness and wholeness? Do you have 
you have faith in lack and limitation, or do you have faith in abundance and prosperity? Do you have faith in judgments and separation? Or do you have faith in love and wonder? Do you have faith in statistics? Do you have faith in heredity? Do you have faith in believing that the past is a great predictor of the future? Or do you believe, do you have faith in the fact that people can change? That you can change? That our world can change? Where do you truly have your faith? Remember, it's what we believe in. It's what we think about. It's where we put our attention. It's what we focus on. So you can have faith in bad things as easily as you can have faith in good things. I assure you. So the question is, where is your faith? What do you expect? What do you anticipate? What are you looking for? What do you hope to find? Where is your attention? Where are your beliefs in this holiday season? And this is a time to reflect upon that. Where is my faith? What am I giving my beliefs and my thoughts and my attention to? What is important? The other question to ask yourself is how big is your faith? Well, yeah. I you know, I believe in that. Well, how big is that faith? You know, on a scale of one to ten, where's your faith? And those things that you truly desire in your life. How strong is it? I mean, it's one thing to say, I have faith in this. But really, how strong is your faith? These are the questions that we are asked to look at in this holiday season. It's one thing to have faith. It's another thing to have strong faith, powerful faith. Faith that just knows and expects and anticipates and knows that whatever it is that I desire is coming forth with me. It's a time for us to pay attention for e at every aspect of our lives, to really look at our lives, and to be fully present, to be aware. What am I paying attention to? What am I doing with my life? Am I getting all caught up in this and that and everything else? Am I wanting to be this, that, and everything? What am I, what am I truly believing about? this beautiful, wonderful time of year. And in looking at ourselves, we're often going to find the light, and we're also going to find the dark. This is the darkest time of year. And looking at the dark side of ourselves is a very okay thing to be doing because that's part of the preparation of the manger. What about myself do I want to change? What do I, where do I want to bring in more light in my life? We have to become more aware of who we are, looking at ourselves, being present to who we are, so that we can change whatever it is we want to change. Too often we run on autopilot. We do everything the same as we always have, the same behaviors, the same patterns, the same rituals, the same this, that, whatever, but are we present to them? Are we really truly present to them? Where is your faith? We heard in the Daily Word today one of the most famous verses in the Bible about faith. Matthew 17, verse 20. For truly, I tell you, if you have the faith of the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. Do you hear that? Nothing will be impossible to you. How much do you believe that? How much do you really believe that? If I asked any one of you, do you really believe you can move a mountain? Do you answer truly, honestly? It's a reflection of your faith. What do you believe? Now, some of us perhaps have moved mountains in our lives, where we've had those powerful miracles, and we've experienced that. We say, yes, I know it's possible to move a mountain. Well, then why aren't you doing it every day? Okay? Because you've done it once in your life doesn't mean you can't do it ten times in your life, a hundred times in your life. Constantly moving with that faith, declaring what we know to be true and moving with it. There's a power in the universe, a power of creation, a power that you and I may use and tap into every single day to create that which we and 
every single day we are creating that which is reflective of our faith, reflective of our beliefs and our thoughts. So now become aware and think about what do I truly desire in life? What do I want that power and presence of creative God stuff to move into my life? What am I focused on? What do I truly desire? Have you even thought about that? What mountain do I want to move this day, this month, this week, this time? Sometimes things get in the way of our faith. It is true. And so <clears throat> I'm inviting you today to really open up this week to be asking yourself, where is my faith? What do I believe in? And as you become aware of that, what do I want to change? What do I really want to believe in? What do I want to have more of in my life? Let us prepare the manger. Because that's the process of preparing our manger. So that our light can shine brighter and the Christ consciousness can come forth and we can really experience Christmas in a new and powerful way. As you investigate your faith and deepen your faith or expand your faith, there's some guidelines that I would like to offer to you. One is be aware of what it is that you desire, what it is that you truly, truly desire in your life, truly want. Too often we're very wishy washy. Okay? Oh, I want to be prosperous. You already are prosperous, okay? How much more prosperous do you want to be? What about asking for specifically what it is you desire and want? You know, I want to feel love in my life. How do you want that love to come forth? You know, sometimes we are so wishy-washy, we're afraid to ask, because if I ask, what if the answer is no? If I pray for something, what if it doesn't come? Oh, well, there's one of the things that really points to our faith, does it not? Are you afraid to ask? Are you afraid to pray? Are you afraid to really acknowledge that there's a power and presence in the universe and it's there for you? Are you asking? Are you looking? Are you asking and anticipating, expecting? What? Have you declared what that is? And if you haven't, why not? If you are afraid that you might not get it, then there is where the, the work needs to, to be, be done. Right? Working with those fears, stepping out of that, praying that perhaps the fear can be erased. The fear can be molded into anticipation. The second thing that happens is once we decide what it is we may want, well then we want to, in typical human fashion, we want to decide how it's going to be done. The letting go of the how is one of the most difficult things humans can do. You have to let go of the how. Because what happens is it's the how that trips you up. Well, I can't have faith that a mountain is going to move from here to there. How is that going to happen? Right? Immediately. How is that going to happen? Or sometimes we say, well, this is what I really want, but I can't see how that's going to happen. Oh, can't see the how. you got to let go of the how. The how is none of your business. The how is God's business. The how is the power and the presence of spirit. That's the business of that. I'll give you an example. My niece, well, several years ago, I had a big garden in a home that I was living in, and we were planting seeds in the, in the garden. She was about three four years old, something like that. So we planted all these seeds. She was very excited. I told her what would happen. With it. The little flowers would come up, and there would be these flowers, and they would look just like a picture on the seed package and all that. So we did that, and we patted them down with earth, and we fed them, and we did all these good things. And it was a nice, bright, sunny day. I said, oh, this is looking good. We're going to have some great flowers. The next morning, I got up, and she was out in the garden. She was pulling all the seeds up. I said, honey, what are you doing? And she said, it's not working. She said, it's not working. There's no flower. And he said, well, we have to put them back into the ground and we have to let them germinate. So 
didn't like that. She didn't understand that. She said, well, okay. So let's just let's give it some time. Next morning, she was out there. She was pulling all the seeds out. It's still not working. You know, I'm sure it's still not working. And I said, well, no, it's because you have to let them be. She says, well, I, I, I. She says, I don't understand. I said, I know you don't, but it's going to be. Third day, she's out there again. And she's pulling up the seat. And he said, you have to let them be. She said, I just, I want them to be. She says, I just want to see how. I want to see how they become. How does it work? How would you explain that? It's three. So what I said is, we're not about the how. That's God. And she looked at me with sort of this dawning understanding. God, yes. And I said, so we have to leave it alone, or you're interrupting God's plan here. So I took them out. So the sprouts came out. And literally, when the first sprouts came up, remember, she came over to visit me. She said, Oh my God, Jim! Oh my God, Jim! And she was very excited. You know, it's sort of like that's what we do sometimes. We plant our seeds, and then we go, Well, how's that going to work? How's that going to I want to see it. How's it going to work? Where is this possibly going to come? We can't imagine how anything is possibly going to come forth in our lives. We have to let go of the how and have faith. And believe that whatever it is that we desire moves into that creative form of the law that, that moves us into creative expression in form and it is done for us. And we can't imagine sometimes the how in terms of these things happen. So it's an invitation to really have faith, to believe, and let go of how it's going to happen. And just let it unfold. That doesn't mean we don't do our part. Doesn't mean we don't do our part. With God, all things are possible. With God, working with God, working with that knowingness, working with our beliefs, working with our faith, we still step out and do what is ours to do, but we let go. Oh. My favorite <clears throat> faith story, it's actually based on a true story. There's a man who told a true story about a pastor in his church. He had a kitten that climbed up a tree in his backyard, and the kitten was unafraid to come down. And the pastor couldn't reach him or get him to pull him down. So he, you know, he put warm milk out. He had treats. He was, you know, talking nicely to the kitten, and the kitten was absolutely petrified and would not come out of the tree. So. The pastor decided, well, I can't climb that tree. The tree wasn't strong enough. So he said, maybe if I can bend that branch down enough, then I can pull the branch down and then I can grab the kitty. So he thought that would be a good plan. So he tied the, a rope around the branch and then he tied it to his car. And so he started to pull the branch down, you know, a little bit, a little bit more. And he, he, he you know, got out and went, you could almost reach it. He went just a little bit more, a little bit more. And you get to the rope broke. And all of a sudden, the, the cat and the little went flying up, and the kitty went flying up into the heavens, and who knows where it landed. And the, the minister was just so upset. And he says, Oh my God, this poor little kitty. And he went looking everywhere. He put up signs. He told everybody, I'm looking for this little kitty. And he didn't know, he couldn't find it, nothing. So he just said, I bless this kitty. You know, this kitty's in God's hands. Okay. He felt terrible, of course, but. Nobody had seen a stray kitten, and so he just prayed. A few days later, he's in the grocery store, and he meets one of his church members. And he looked at her shopping cart, and he was amazed to see cat food. Now, this woman was a cat hater. Okay, she did not like cat. Everyone knew that. So he asked her, why are you buying cat food when you hate cats so much? And she replied, you won't believe this. <laughs> and told him how her little girl had been begging her for a cat. But she had kept refusing. She said, no, 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 I don't, I don't want a cat. Then a few days before, the child had begged again. So the mom finally told her little girl, well, if God gives you a cat, I'll let you keep it. 
She told the pastor, I watched my child go out in the yard, get on her knees, and ask God for a cat. And really, Pastor, you won't believe this. I saw it with my own eyes. A kitten suddenly came flying out of the blue sky with his paws out spread and landed right in front of her. This little girl had faith. This little girl had faith. Mom said, yes, okay, God, I'm ready for my kid. Darling little kitten, you needed a home. Now, could we ever have imagined how that's going to happen? You see, the how is so amazing because God is so amazing. Because that universal power is so amazing. It does, in fact, move mountains. It does, in fact, bring us all that we desire if we believe. And we have to let go of how it's going to happen. Because in our wildest imaginations, we would never come up with some of the ways in which some of these things unfold in our lives. It's difficult, but it's very important. So a practice that you might begin to employ with your faith is, you know, I'm going to have some wonderful family gatherings, perhaps where there's been tension and distrust or, or you know, discord. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be harmonious. I don't know how, but I believe it and know it and pray. You know, as we pray for those things, and we can even say, I can't imagine how this is going to happen, but I'm going to know that it's going to be true. I'm going to believe and have faith in it. Hope, anticipation, expectation. For whatever it is you desire, receive it. A second guideline is to add the energy of your heart to whatever you are about. The shopping, the food preparation, the getting together with friends and family. To be in your heart. You know what I mean. There's times we get very much involved in our head and in our ego and da 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 you know, we get very caught up in these things. And my my invitation to you is think about it. Is that somebody in your heart? When you send me your heart, open up to the opportunities that you have to give of your heart, to share of your heart, to share in the season. Put your energy into preparing the manger. Every day, regardless of what you are doing, open up your heart to it. How can I make my life brighter? And how can I make your life brighter? What can you give to others this, this season? I'm, not talking about, I'm talking about the gifts of you, of your smile, of your courtesy of your presence, of your being aware, of just being with people. Can you be kind? Are there possibilities that may come forth for you? Ask for those possibilities. Remember, we're, we're preparing a manger. It's as though it's a nursery for a new child. With love and care, I'm opening my heart so that the Christ consciousness can expand and grow within me in new and powerful and wonderful ways. Let that be part of your, this season's quest. <clears throat> a certain dad was shocked and surprised when his son gave him a gift. He didn't think his son had any money. In fact, he knew he didn't have any money, so he wondered, how did he get me a gift? So he begins to open this beautifully wrapped present, and lo and behold, what's inside but uh, two AA batteries and a note. Gift not included. <laughs> and he he just treasured this this gift that son who found a way to give something of his heart. So it's it's to think about that, the batteries. What what are you where's your batteries? What are you charged up with this season? Are you letting the batteries in your life really ignite and start something? powerful and wonderful for you for this season. You know, it's, if we can 
add an element of love into everything that you do. If when you approach the, the store, you're going to go in and do some shopping with the frenetic people everywhere, can you just say, I'm going in with heart? I'm going in with heart. And watch how things change when you, when you settle into your instead of coming in from love. Because all that you give, when you give of your love, it will come back to you a hundredfold. It will make the season so much brighter. The question really is, what is important? What is important to you this season? Where is your focus? What is your attention on? And are you spending any time in your heart? Are you spending any time preparing the manger? My final little story it was a December night in Anderson, South Carolina, where a shopper came out of the store, and she paused on her rounds of shopping, and, and she saw and stared at an old, unkempt man sitting on a park bench. His coat was threadbare, and he had a paper bag around his neck to keep out the cold. This woman was standing there, and she was feeling sorrow. And then another person came by, a girl. She was 11 or 12. She stopped, too, and she looked. And then with no prompting from anyone, she walked up. She took her red woolen scarf and wrapped it silently around the man's neck. And this was it. May we be asked for and pray for opportunities that we may share in our love this holiday season. Have faith that you are a loving and caring and kind and wonderful person and that your light is shining. And have faith that you will have opportunities to let your light shine, to let it open up. Because as you do, you are preparing the manger. You're preparing yourself for the birth of a Christ consciousness that will be one million times the value of anything in the most high material. What is the promise? What is the promise of the birth of Christ? And that all that we desire will be given unto you. This, <clears throat> this year we have Advent booklets. The glow of Christmas at the end of the service today will all be handed um, one of these. There's some beautiful stories in here, some wonderful just ways of reading. Maybe spend some time reading these with your family or with yourself alone. But spend some time with this Advent booklet. It's a mini booklet and it's powerful. Each week we'll be dealing with the different, the different um, values that we work with. It's faith. And then we'll move on to peace. Next week is peace. And I assure you that my lesson on peace is not what you expect. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite unusual. Um, so I invite you to come to hear about peace in a new and interesting way. And then, then we move into love and then joy. And then we finally, you know, Christmas Eve, on the eve of this birthing, you know, we, we have an opportunity to celebrate the candlelight service and really move into a heart state and be there. Be sure that you allow time this season, beginning now, to prepare the manger. And I invite you throughout the week to truly ask those questions. Where is my faith? And how can I redirect it? And how can I make it bigger? By declaring what I want, by letting go of the how. And if ever you try to figure out how something's going to happen, you think of that cat. <laughs> <laughs> A catastrophe story. And, and then open up your heart. My heart, to whatever may come forth, let me step out each day.